Welcome to SNC Critical Insights. Today, we will discuss the impact of the COVID-19 crisis on deal making. I am Frank Aquila, Global Head of M&A at Sullivan and Cromwell's New York office. Joining us are Scott Miller, partner in our general practice group here in New York, and Rita Ann O'Neill, partner and co-head of our private equity practice based in our LA office. From an M&A perspective, what do you think uh, is going to be the lasting impact on transactional work in executing and negotiating uh, transactions uh, post uh, COVID-19? Do you think it's going to have an impact? Well, well, thanks, Frank. Uh, part, part of me really hopes not, uh, but I'm sure it will. Uh, you know, principals uh, and their advisors, like their lawyers, are, are obviously making do under under the current circumstances, and uh, you know the rapid and really almost universal uh, adoption of the sort of collaboration technology we're using here uh, has certainly enabled us to do our jobs uh, as advisors as effectively as possible under the circumstances. And uh, let's face it, if uh, if the cast of Hamilton can stay in harmony over Zoom, we ought to be able to get to an issues list on a merger agreement. Um, uh, but more fundamentally, though, I, I worry that there will be a lasting change and, and one that uh, I think I think advisors and principals are going to have to grapple with, and that really affects the execution of transactions more than the le specific legal issues. And I think you know, we're going to talk about contractual issues and regular timelines later in the presentation, and those are, are necessarily being impacted by the virus and presumably the long tail we're going to face before it's business as usual. Uh, but to me, one of the biggest issues uh, we're facing now and, and we will face in the future is really the social aspect uh, of M&A transactions, the sort of relationship building, uh, particularly among principals, uh, mm -hmm. is necessarily going to be impacted. You know, the time that uh, that people spend together in the early stages of transactions really build relationships um, and those relationships are, you know really pretty fundamental uh, to to getting over the tough hurdles in any transaction whether it's difficult points in negotiating an agreement uh, and importantly the things that may, many of us are addressing now but but the hurdles that you face in trying to get from signing of, of a, an agreement to uh, to closing. Uh, and it's a lot easier to me, it becomes a lot easier to, you know, to walk away or to reach an impasse that's hard to get over if you don't have empathy for your counterpart. Um, and I think it's going to be challenging to develop that. It is challenging to develop that empathy uh, in this environment and working remotely. And if this becomes a new normal, I think deals are going to be harder to get through and, and we're going to have to figure out a way to uh, to energize that level of empathy and that relationship building in a in a more remote environment that I suspect we're going to be we're going to be living with. Yeah, Scott, I think you make a good point. And one of the things I've always found in deal making is trying to understand the other side's objectives and bridging that gap. And if you really haven't built that relationship, it's harder to do. Uh, Rita, you do a lot of private equity uh, work. Uh, what, what sort of impact do you think uh, yeah, this period is going to have on how private equity groups do uh, deals going forward? So one of the things that we've seen in the past few years is that we've started to have a lot of a lot more in-person negotiating sessions, which had largely gone um, by the wayside after right after the financial crisis because of cost cutting measures, but particularly in the private equity space. Those in-person contacts, particularly during management presentations, are so important to developing uh, the relationships with the management teams. And so I think that although Zoom may and, and other video conferencing services may play a role in trying to replicate some of the in-person negotiating among lawyers and, mm -hmm. and on transactions, with respect to the management presentations and in-person meetings, I think those are going to, to start up again as soon as people are safe to travel. The last thing I'd like to leave you with is just some uh, very quick thoughts on uh, M&A. And having been through a lot of these crises over the years, whether it was the dot-com bubble bursting, 9-11, the financial crisis, 
uh, it, it often seems because MA activity uh, stops for a period of time that maybe this is the end of uh, MA. The reality is it's a bit of a reset, and the type of MA that uh, follows these crises is always a bit different from what we saw before the crises. But in the end, what we find is that uh, business leaders uh, use mergers and acquisitions as a tool. And uh, I think we will find in the months and years ahead that MA activity uh, is as vital to the global uh, economic uh, picture as it has been in, in the past. It will be different than it was before, but it will be just as central. And as uh, companies are uh, maybe uh, limited in the future from buying back stock, uh, from inhibited maybe from increasing their dividend, and uh, in a low growth uh, economic environment, we may very well see uh, a robust M&A environment as boards and managements seek to replace that growth with uh, synergistic uh, M&A uh, opportunities. And I think has been touched on by a number of uh, my colleagues that the changes in technology and the changes in the uh, economic environment that were there already, but have really been hastened by this pandemic and in the way we've had to operate over the last uh, month or more uh, are going to uh, uh, shape the way companies uh, see their businesses going forward and will shape the way they uh, make acquisitions and do business uh, in the future. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Stay safe, be well, stay healthy. Thank you again. Thank you.